Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Hello and welcome. I'm Jeffrey Mishlove. Our topic today is using a pendulum, working with the idiomotor response. My guest, Dr. Mary Baxter, is the author of Getting Started with Your Pendulum, as well as Life Experiences of 21st Century Spiritual Healers. Once again, this is an internet interview, and now I'll switch over to the internet video. Welcome, Mary. It's a pleasure to be with you once again. Thank you. Pleasure to be with you too, Jeffrey. Today we'll be talking about the pendulum and your work with the pendulum. I know uh, from our previous conversations it's very important in, in the work that you do and, and of course working with the what psychologists call the idiomotor response is, is very important in the whole discipline of dowsing and in, in many other uh, traditions. Yes, yes. I think it's, um, it's not something I ever knew about um, or gave any consideration to. And when I decided, okay, I'm going to learn how to read the Akashic Records, the system that I learned in that was the first thing that I had to learn was how to use a pendulum. And so that was my introduction over 20 years ago. I've tried to use a pendulum myself from time to time, and I never had regular instruction. I just sort of bungled into it. And for me, and I think for many people, uh, the results have been mixed. I, I wonder, uh, in order to get consistent results, you describe a process of training that's required. Yes, it's very, the way I learned and the way I teach using a pendulum is very methodical. And then it's also something that you keep doing. It's um, consistent practice is the key to developing confidence. Usually that is the major obstacle that people face with using a pendulum or muscle testing, which is very similar. Kinesiology, this using of the human energy system, electrical system, you called it. The idiomotor response. And so that's what's really going on in a pendulum is like a biofeedback tool. Something within yourself has an answer and it's outside often of our rational mind, what the rational mind is thinking. And I think of pendulum dowsing as like a verification tool in many ways where, you know, you're not going to douse about something that you haven't thought about. And so you have an answer in your mind um, of, of something being correct or true or false. And you're really verifying whether that is correct and checking in with what I think of as my soul or higher self or spirit guides and it's it isn't necessary to believe in that the, these things exist i think everyone has at least an idea that they have a higher mind that there's a part of their mind that has more of an overview than what we're going through reacting and responding in a in the moment um if we're ever in the moment, uh, that's that's one of the keys of uh, pendulum dowsing successfully is being able to bring yourself into the moment rather than in worry um, or anxiety over anything. One of the issues uh, that has come up in the literature uh, uh, Dr. Jewel Eisenbud, for example, wrote a book called Parapsychology in the Unconscious. He's a Freudian, and he suggested that certain people are going to have unconscious impulses of a self-destructive nature, and uh, when they attempt to engage in uh, any kind of parapsychological activity, it might end up working in the service of those impulses instead of in the service of their highest and best self. 
So there is um, there's a need for deliberately connecting, and like before I ever begin um, using a pendulum um, or muscle testing or any anything where I'm moving outside of day to day thought, where I'm inviting in, um, I'm inviting in interdimensional intelligence, something that's not just here on the physical plane, and it's very important always to connect in light to ask for truth that this this is the point of the asking and you know um, Dr. David Hawkins who um, wrote Power Versus Force and The Eye of the Eye and so many books and he died I think in 2012 Um, a psychiatrist a very uh, very intelligent man and he developed a system He used muscle testing and um, he a map of the scale of consciousness and he, many, many details about that. But one of the keys is that if you are not in integrity, which I think would be connecting in light, if you yourself have ulterior motives or are being interfered with, that can interfere very much with your ability to um, get truth, um, to get, get positive results from something like pendulum dowsing. There definitely can be interferences, and this could stop a person from continuing or practicing or, or getting through that. Um, so it's definitely there. There's a process of okay, I'm going to try this out, I'm going to connect in light, which you would do, I think, anytime. It's like a prayer. You're connecting in light. You're connecting for, for guidance. Then from that perspective, you also bring your mind, and call it theta, a, a brainwave state called theta, which is very much like a meditative state. It's very, very quiet, but it's not like going into a trance or falling asleep and, and not being aware. It's a definite brainwave state that's measurable. And um, you bring yourself there through whatever process you would use to go into a meditation. It might be some deep, slow breaths, closing the eyes. Um, Some people play a tone on a singing bowl. Whatever brings you into this very peaceful state, you're connected in light, and then you're able to go into some questions that you might have. Um, also, the training of the of the pendulum. I have a couple of here. Here, this is a you know very standard brass pendulum. I like it because it uh, you can. It unscrews, so I could put something in there, which I have not, but I I think about it. And, you know, commercially available online is where I got it. And then uh, this is another uh, more delicate. I make pendulums and um, th- like doing this sort of, of thing. So you can, there, there are pendulums available in rock shops, uh, metaphysical shops, and, and very very much online but it's you train the pendulum which you had mentioned earlier and in my book getting started with your pendulum I have it uh, diagram for it and so forth but the idea is you want to end up that you are not moving your pendulum that's one of people's biggest concerns is how do I know I'm not making it move you know and it's by training you start out with um, telling yourself your body body, your ideomotor system, what you want it to do. So um, if I want a yes, I always train um, to go in a positive direction, uh, clockwise to circle. This is a yes. Counterclockwise, this is a no. And I'm doing that on purpose because uh, it's a training. It, It basically comes out through the pendulum, but it's really a training of that system, nervous system, electrical system, um, to do what you want it to do for a yes, for a no. And with a pendulum, you can get all kinds of crazy motions and you 
learn as you go along. But it is very much, um, I think, a biofeedback tool. And so you get the answer that you're looking for, and then it shows up in the way that the pendulum is moving. Now, I, because of the camera set up here, I'm holding it up, you know, to show so it's caught on the camera. But I like to do it in a relaxed way with my elbow resting um, on the table or desk and and so forth. But that is, it's so basic. This is not a difficult thing. The hardest thing is believing that you're actually doing it, that you're not necessarily influencing um Beyond what you, the information you want to receive, if it's from your higher intelligence, from a spirit guide, and so forth, that you're not overriding that. And I think that comes with practice. I'm under the impression that uh, people who are talented at it and, uh, like yourself, work with it professionally, it becomes a, a lifelong discipline, but that the average person uh, can probably... Um, because of, amongst other things, beginner's luck, get good results uh, right off the bat. If you want it and you're not filled with self-doubt, like in the training process, you would be making statements or asking questions that you know the answer to. So, I mean, that's how you, you find out. Like if you say your name and your pendulum tells you you're wrong, you don't go into like, oh my God, what is my real name and, and what's going on here? You just realize, okay, it's not working yet to, you know, go ahead and do this. I, it came very easily to me to use the pendulum because it didn't occur to me to ask any questions about myself. Um, I was using it to learn a system. I was working off um, questions and lists, and I was also working with other people, questions about other people. Um, so I was kind of removed, like I was interested in what the answers were more than invested in what they needed to be. And so that's probably um, also a major interference, is, is if you must get a certain answer to a question, if, if, it, if you just cannot tolerate um, anything other than a certain answer, uh, you'll lock yourself into that. You know, you only, I think we, you, we only receive as much truth as we can handle. Nothing is being forced on us. Um, but the more removed you are the, from the results, the more truth I think you can receive. Now, the idea of the ideomotor response, as I understand it, is there subconscious muscle movements that uh, cause the pendulum to react one way or, or the other. So you're really questioning your own system. You're, you're, you're expecting, you're setting the expectation, I think would be, even be a better way to put it, that, that you're subconscious nervous system knows the answer and is going to provide you with the information you need. Well, it could be that, or it could be that you've set it up so that it's like a receiver, like a radio receiver, that when it receives the information, it's going to convey it through your body is going to do that. And one of the things that was so interesting, I was teaching a workshop in France, and I'm moving around very quickly between people and someone said you're moving it your hand is moving you're moving it and I'm and it's like not the, it, you're gonna move you know um, if your if your system is moving the pendulum is moving it's not unusual at all to see that your hand moves and it almost seems backward to me like oh the pendulum is not is moving and that's making it more obvious that my hand is moving but it's like if you sit down to write and if suddenly you're writing, but it's not writing anything you're thinking, you would know, like, whoa, what's 
doing this, you know, what's taking over my hand. There is no doubt. And it's very much the same with pendulum dowsing. You know when you're moving it. That's why there's the training. You know that you're doing that. It's it's not something that's coming at you from the outside. And so it really isn't that difficult. And one of the toughest things, you know, in that, oh, I want to make sure I'm not moving it, is choking off your whole nervous system. So nothing is moving. Well, then the pendulum is not going to move either. So it's just, it's a, a... It's a simple thing, has a lot of little nuances, but it comes together um, if you practice with it. And then what happened for me as I was I was doing readings for people and I would get together with them and I would use the pendulum and a client was the first one who went, wait a minute, um, can I ask a direct question and I'm like sure and she did and we got an answer and all of a sudden it just opened up this whole pathway of dealing with day-to-day life and someone else a client's questions about people activities what they wanted to be doing um, became questions that I could provide answers and it, it definitely was that detachment it wasn't my life it wasn't you know my my, my kind of issue, but it sort of came as a surprise to me to use it in that way. And now, um, all the time, and in my own life, I definitely use this. Thinking about the I Ching as another uh, resource that people sometimes go to for answers, or, or like tarot, I have heard it um, advised that you shouldn't go to the oracle too often, that when you use the I Ching, it should be for a, a special purpose, and if you're using it all the time, uh, then then its power gets diluted. Uh, but what I'm hearing you say that is that the pendulum is different than that. Well, I think it's intention. Um, Mm -hmm. I use the I Ching for 25 years, multiple times a day. Um, I think more out of fear and anxiety than anything else. Like, oh my gosh, you know, what's going on? What should I do? These kinds of questions. And, you know, there's all those lines and it's very complex. And there is not a direct answer as far as I could tell. Even after 25 years, I would still call my friend Dave and go, what does this mean? You know, here's my question and, and here's all of this, like needing this interpretation. So when I learned about the pendulum and that, oh my gosh, yes, no, this was like fantastic, especially um, for little day-to-day things. Um, I think where we get in trouble with any kind of oracle, um, and this includes the pendulum, is when we ask the same question over and over and over. And I liken it to, you know, if you were to ask me a question and I answered you, and then you asked me the same question, and I'd be like, huh, and I'd answer you again. Well, maybe by the third or fourth time, I would excuse myself and leave, you know, go and do something else. Because why, why am I getting the same question over and over? And I think guidance functions in the same way, whether you keep it within your idea of yourself, your higher mind, or if you're going out thinking of spirit guides and so forth, it's like you get an answer. Well, take it and go with that. Um, If you keep asking over and over, you really do dilute um, the answers. You could start getting all kinds of crazy answers just because you are misusing the tool. You also begin your work with the pendulum, as I recall, by saying a prayer. I say a blessing. It's my way of opening in light, opening to the light. And it's not very long, but I like it. And what what had ha- I didn't use it all the time. I would use it when I was in a reading. Um, but then I but I remembered I was sitting in my car. I had just gotten off the beach. I would just was thinking about. I had a list of things to do. 
and I do this a lot. So what should I do first, especially if I'm driving? Do I go to the post office? Should I go downtown to the grocery store? And I just jumped in and, and you know, had these questions. I muscle tested. Now, I, when I go out, I don't use a pendulum. I muscle test. And I teach both, and there's some videos on um, YouTube that, that I've done, plus lots by other people. Um, and so what I realized was that my when I was following the guidance I thought I was getting, uh, things were not really going that smoothly, and it kind of surprised me. And what I realized was I wasn't taking that step for day to day I wasn't taking that step of connecting in light now terrible things weren't happening but I wanted a smooth where things you know fit together and so it was a great experience of finally of recognizing oh wait a minute I'm skipping this major step of connecting in light connecting with my higher self and then going into that process and so um, I, I say the blessing I say it in my head. Um, not every, you know, things don't have to be said out loud. We're not making spectacles of ourselves, which is why I don't pendulum douse over vegetables um, in the produce section. You know, it's just very, very uh, simple method, but the same uh, process. Now, you've talked about an interesting use, which is if you have a list of things, a to-do list, uh, to help you prioritize which ones are really the most important. Lists are fantastic. And, you know, I'll have a list. I'm a great list maker every day, things that need to be done. Some are obvious, but it's not always, and or the order is not always obvious. And so just checking what is the, what's the first thing, you know, that I need to do and just getting the answer to that you don't have to do the entire list just start out with number what get what the first thing is get it done um, and then I th things kind of flow it's I don't want you to think that every moment in everything I do I'm like pendulum dousing or or checking but there is a flow that develops when you have that in mind and I also think um, it helps you develop your intuition, um, your openness to receiving um, that moment-to-moment -moment guidance that just helps life go more smoothly. You slow down a little mm. bit. Be kinder. Yeah. Are there advanced techniques that you use? For example, you talk about reading the Akashic Records. How does the dowsing fit into that? There, it really is a verification tool. When I go into the records, I'm looking for very particular things. Um, for a soul profile reading, there's a pretty standard group of questions and information that I want to find in a particular order. And so I do use a pendulum when I look at those aspects with um, the soul information of an individual. Um, otherwise, if, if there, are, there are particular questions coming from a person, then those are what guides that questioning. But it's very methodical. And so it's very much like a list. And this is how, I, what I think pendulum dowsing does is it makes friends of our rational mind and our intuitive minds, that those parts of, that they can be friends if we open. Not that, okay, you know, just thinking and figuring things out with physical evidence and so forth, and then the intuition is separate. Uh, it's some of the greatest inventors of all times, great thinkers, um, definitely use their intuition and talk about it and what the process is. Now, whether they were pendulum dousing or muscle testing is really beside the point. The, the point is getting in touch with your intuitive guidance. And the pendulum is a tool that really facilitates that. Well, I suppose whether it's muscle testing or working with the pendulum, in both cases, you're using your 
your physical vehicle, your body, as what, what I would call an intuitive antenna. Right. That, I think that's exactly the way I look at it. And I, a friend of mine once had shown me a heart math tool that was on the computer, and you were like... Um, Getting into coherence where your brain, your thoughts, you know, what's going on up here would be in coherence with your heart, which should be like really mellow. And there were colors and scenes that would come up on the computer screen depending on where where I was at. So I'm, I'm doing this and it's biofeedback. And it was at that point that I realized that's really what we're doing with pendulum dowsing. If we're getting into that um, theta state, that mellow, more coherent state, then we really are open to information that's useful for us right in the moment or about some future event that we're asking about. Um, We can bring all of that in. And so there's something about, I think, having the tool of the pendulum that also for me is a reminder. Now I'm going to <clears throat> I'm going to slow down. I'm going to look for some answers. And um, I, I use lists because I always did. I always did. That was how my rational mind, you know, worked. I come from a family of list makers. And so adding in intuition and pendulum dowsing to that just really seemed it very miraculous to me. Well, uh, this has been a very interesting overview, uh, Mary. Do you have any other thoughts uh, about the use of the pendulum to share with our viewers? Well, I think the main thing to me is where you're coming from. In your own mind, in your own thoughts, what are you trying to accomplish when you ask questions or take up concerns with your intuition? And as long as you're connected in light, and a main thing is well, the highest good of all. Not to be, you know, um, so enclosed, so self centered that you don't really care what's good for anybody else, you know, just what a, a, a situation where you're really more manipulative than. Pendulum dowsing um, is not going to work the way you think it will. You're limiting what you're open to in um, kind of in a negative way. And so I really discourage um, being in that frame of mind when you're going to do something like pendulum dowsing. Um, Always, you know, if, if something is only good for you, um, it isn't just, it isn't good, you know, it's, we really are um, a unit, um, we're a world, there's a oneness about us, and as long as we can also care um, about what's happening, that what we want also, like the butterfly effect, you know, reverberates out in a positive way in the world, the pendulum is a fantastic tool and can really help you guide yourself in your life. Dr. Mary Baxter, thank you so much for sharing your uh, experience and your practice. Uh, I think it will be of great benefit to many viewers. Great. I, I hope so. And I am constantly teaching this. It's a part of every course that I teach. Um, I just think it's a wonderful thing to learn how to do, open your mind and experiment. So thank you very much for taking the time with me to look at this. My pleasure, Mary. 